Today I'm going to hit upon risk management and active asset allocation. So where do we start? Well, let's look at the big picture, the macro picture. The macro picture gives us a viewpoint of what the overall global economic situation is. Are we growing? Are we in an inflationary or a deflationary environment? And what does monetary policy look like? Are they neutral? Are they dovish? Are they hawkish? Are they concerned? Where are they at? By looking at those three elements from a macro standpoint, we can get an idea of where we're headed on a global scale and bring it down even to your country in here, the United States, and looking at where we are at in that cycle. So I've put up a chart here that shows you the four different sectors that we are looking at when it comes to growth, inflation, and monetary policy. All right, sector one. Growth is accelerating, inflation is neutral, and monetary policy is neutral. Sector two is where you're starting to see growth continuing to accelerate, but inflation is also accelerating, and the monetary policy is the hawkish. To give you a time stamp, think about the last presidential election in 2016. After President Trump was elected, we entered into a growth period of time where taxes were lowered both on the corporate and individual side of things and inflation started to move higher things started there was more demand than supply and monetary policy was looking at it from the standpoint of oh we got to control inflation by raising interest rates and there's a lot of talk about that sector three is slowing growth rising inflation and concern on a monetary uh, approach for those of you who are around in the 70s, the Carter administration was a prime example of stagflation, where growth was declining, inflation was rising, and overall monetary policy was concerned. And then sector four, well, this is a recessionary or depressionary environment. And that's where growth is slowing, inflation is slowing, and monetary policy is dovish. So where are we today? Well, let's start out at the first of 2020. After 2019's banner year in the markets, we entered the 2020 uh, year and in mid, mid part of uh, the first quarter in February, we moved from a growth oriented environment to an, a low cost on the cost of money, which was more of a sector two placing to a quickly move to sector four, slowing growth. Uh, slowing inflation and the monetary policy was dovish. March hit and COVID hit our front doors. Countries started locking down, every place, you know, starting in China, going across into Europe, and then entering the United States. We entered a sector four category or, or sector. We entered a recession and the market started to move downward in a very violent way. The liquidity crisis is what we, uh, the way I explain it. It's where all of a sudden everybody is selling everything to raise dollars, U.S. dollars, as because it's the reserve currency, and be, by raising dollars, you're selling your treasury assets that you're carrying. One of the biggest holders of treasury assets in the world is China. They hold our U.S. treasuries. They exchange our treasuries for U.S. dollars so they can buy goods from other countries. Because most people don't trust the yuan. It's not a widely used currency. So this liquidity crisis that hit us in March was this sell your high-grade assets, your treasuries, go exchange them for U.S. dollars. And you saw the U.S. dollar rise. You saw this movement uh, uh, overall just out of markets to create liquidity. And then we had government and central bank stimulus. This created an environment of money in your pocket, support the e economy, keep things propped up, keep cash flow in people's households so they're not missing uh, debt payments, they're not missing rent or mortgage payments, they're staying afloat. And that's where we saw the PPP loan, we saw the big injection of over uh, close to six trillion all in all, and that started a very, very narrow bull market. From, at that point, April, May, we moved from a sector four to a sector three. We saw slowing growth, but rising inflation. 
What do I mean by inflation? How did things inflate, you ask? Well, think about it. In March, when we hit the all-time lows on the uh, inner day on March 23rd, we saw the US dollar get to a peak of a dollar five. So our dollar is worth a lot, but to outside uh, countries who are buying our goods, our prices became inflated in comparison to their currency, okay? So now we're in an environment where stimulus has come in, government is printing money, they're supporting the market, they're ta the Federal Reserve is taking on, uh, their balance sheet is skyrocketing up to in the seven trillion uh, environment, which means they're taking and supporting the treasury market, keeping yields down and keeping bond values high so that the cost of their borrowing doesn't escalate to where they can't borrow anymore. So you're at this point, we've moved into sector three, everybody's getting a paycheck, markets are doing great, but the true economy is truly slowing and growth is going down. So we're in an environment of stagflation. The Federal Reserve has lowered interest rates to the lowest they can go before going negative. And so we're now in this environment of stagflation where the markets are doing well, yet the overall economy is not. September hits, the checks have ended, people who are getting $600 a week uh, in mailbox checks who are investing in the stock market are no longer getting them. They're now getting maybe 300. In some cases, they're not getting anything. And all of a sudden you start to see the market start to roll over. We're now progressing to a slowing growth, slowing inflation and dovish monetary policy. We're moving back into sector four. What does this mean to you? All of a sudden, what was working your technology companies, your high flyers, your 401k has been banging out heavy returns because you're heavy in the large cap categories where a lot of the rally has been and all of a sudden it starts tapering off. And it's because you're heavy in technology within those, those uh, mutual funds or in those uh, ETF uh, index funds or just outright your own in technology in your individual portfolio. What do you do now that we have rotated into sector four, we're entering a recessionary environment, slowing growth, we're now in a deflationary environment. So what does this mean for you in your portfolio? Number one, I'm an intermediate to long-term investor. I manage money based on the intermediate trend, long-term trend. I am not a trader, I'm not a day trader. I'm not trying to time this market. What I'm doing is risk managing this market. So when I see the macro make a major shift from sector one to two to four to three, back to four, I'm managing that risk by rebalancing and reallocating my for portfolio from risk on to risk off. You've now moved into sector four, you've gotten some great returns off the bottom in March. What do you do? First step, reevaluate your overall risk of your portfolio in relation to your risk tolerance. We have uh, this program called Risk Alize, and it's a, about a five minute questionnaire and you just go on and it get, asks you basically questions of how you see ri or view risk over the next six months. Not the next five years or 10 years, but over the si next six months. And it gives you a risk score. Once I get the risk score, I take that risk score and I compare it to the portfolio. And when the portfolio is, deviates from the risk score outside of its boundaries, I then rebalance in relation to that risk score. So for instance, if you've been investing and you invested heavy in, uh, in the bottom of March and you've gotten really incredible returns, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50% in some of these positions. This is the time where you look at your risk score and you start to trim back your allocation. Let's talk about allocation. Asset allocation is when you diversify amongst different sectors, different industries, uh, different stocks and bond positions. Now you can be an aggressive investor. That doesn't mean that you're signing up to lose, gain 50% and then lose 
that isn't winning the game. You're just basically staying neutral in a case like that. And unfortunately, time is working against you. Since we haven't found the fountain of youth, uh, we are fighting time. So managing your aggressiveness is key. Building a proper portfolio is key. Allocation is key. Over allocating to one sector, one uh, company can be disastrous. So when I allocate to equity positions within a portfolio, I take on a max of 6% in each individual equity position. 6% is not gonna blow me up if it goes to zero. And that's really the trick. I'm really risk managing my portfolio so that I can stay in the game for the long run. Remember, I'm looking at the world from an intermediate to long-term perspective. I wanna play the game because I've got goals and dreams I'm trying to hit. So when I allocate my equity position in my overall allocation, I don't allocate any more than 6%. Now, in my, uh, depending on where we are at within the sectors, that 6% can be, can be cut in half to 3% to risk manage. And when my portfolios grow and have incredible uh, strength and grow over the you know, a period of time, in my 6% six posi six position becomes 12 or 15 or even more, I risk manage and I trim that position down to the original 6%. Because as we have seen from March to the 1st of September of 2020, is that we had an enormous amount of growth in all markets and all of a sudden now we're petering out and i'm looking at the volatility of those indexes uh, and looking at where are we at in that volatility gate are is volatility becoming still bearish which is great for uh which is bullish for stocks and and w bonds if you're looking at the move index which is the volatility index for uh, the 10-year uh, treasury so by looking at the the volatility i see the volatility is starting to become bullish in September, which means it's bearish for stocks, and I take my big grow position that has grown from a 6% allocation to 12 to 15, and I trim it back down to this original six. I book gains, so we rebalance back to that 6%. I look at my sector rotation, we moved from sector three to sector four. I now know that my some of my positions will not work in sector four, I don't want to totally get out of them. I want to stick to them because I believe in the companies. I believe they're companies that are going to revolutionize the world and change how we live and, and, and take us to the next level. So I'll cut those 6% positions in half or down to 25 or so percent. I still own them. But what I've done is I've raised cash and I look at other defensive positions that will do great in a sector four positioning. And in some cases, because of limitations, I may not be able to allocate. And so maybe I just sit on the sidelines. In closing, active asset allocation is key. If you're managing your own portfolio, it's key to have a process. Have a macro view of the world. Where are we at? Have a sector rotation within the, that world and then reallocate accordingly to where we are in those sectors. Not having a process ends in an emotional train wreck. We've seen it year over the last 20 some years, the tech bubble, the housing bubble, and now we're entering the corona bubble. Be careful, risk manage your portfolio. You're not an investor, you're a risk manager.